Remember when Friday nights were must-see TV? All in one night, you've got a reason to thank goodness it's Friday. Let's go back. Tamagotchi, the of Y2K. The year is 1997. Titanic is the biggest film of the year, the world is introduced to the Teletubbies, and everyone's ninth favorite Batman, George Clooney, is named Sexiest Man Alive. The bird flu, a virus that originated in China, threatens a global pandemic, and Heaven's Gate, a cult, kills themselves because of their eccentric leader's beliefs. Some things never change. Now let me set the mood. It's October 31st, 1997. You just came home from school. Your parents picked up a fresh pizza from McDonald's, and you wash it down with a Capri Sun. You know, the kind that turned you into the Terminator or some shit. You put on your favorite Mighty Morphin Power Rangers costume and go trick-or-treating. When you get home, you get into your Reptar pajamas, sit down, put on the TV, and turn on ABC at 8 o'clock, and you see this. Let's play for Halloween Bash, beginning with Sabrina. Have a cool time. For those of you who aren't familiar with TJF, it was a weekly television lineup on ABC every Friday night. This was before TiVo and streaming existed. That means if you had a favorite show, you watched it when it aired. If you missed it, you had to wait months for a rerun. The reason I chose 1997 wasn't only because it was a Halloween special, but because growing up, my two favorite TGIF shows were Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Boy Meets World. This seemed like the perfect year because Boy Meets World had already been on the air for years, and at this point, Sabrina the Teenage Witch was in its second season and got out all those first year establishing itself episodes. Speaking of which, let's get into Sabrina the Teenage Witch, starting at 8pm with the episode called A River of Candy Corn Runs Through It. The episode starts with the classic TV trope of getting the wrong furniture from a different realm. Like I said, classic. At school, Sabrina's rival Libby announces she's throwing a Halloween party. And you know what the best part is? What? No freaks. Sabrina the Teenage Witch? More like Libby the Teenage Bitch, am I right? Thank you, thank you, thank you. To counteract this, Sabrina's friend Valerie announces that Sabrina will be holding a Halloween party this year. Sabrina's aunts agree, and the party is a go. But uh-oh, Sabrina's aunts bought talking furniture. Could you people hug off? Marvin, could you possibly be nice to the new owners for a change? It has been a long time since I've watched an episode of Sabrina. But the moment the furniture started speaking, it reminded me why I love this show so much. So the furniture's talking, but the party's about to begin. It's explained they can't zap it away until it's paid off, and every store in the witch realm is closed on Halloween. And then Salem says something sassy. A couch who's allergic to cats? Finally! Someone whose life is more pathetic than mine. They try to put the furniture down in the basement, but uh-oh, talking termites. Are you gonna finish that knot hole? <laughs> Valerie arrives early to help set up the party, while Sabrina tries to hide the fact that her furniture speaks. Oh, and that her aunt has made an endless supply of candy corn. How could this get any worse? Well, Halloween carolers show up from a different realm. Halloween my true love gave to me 12,000 eyeballs. Oh, by the way, if you've never seen the show, you can travel to different realms from their upstairs linen closet. People show up, but Valerie wants to leave because she realizes she's the only one that dressed up for the Halloween party. This party was your idea in the first place, Valerie, so get it together. People at the party start complaining and want to leave because the talking termites ate through the music player. Then, all hell breaks loose. But surprise! Nobody thinks Sabrina's a teenage witch. They all think it's a really cool Halloween trick. So Salem starts speaking in front of everybody, because why the hell not? Say Asher. Asher. Loser. Loser. Sabrina says screw it and uses her magic to bring the band 10,000 Maniacs there. They were a real band at the time. I actually had to look it up because I had no idea who they were. I would have preferred Hanson's Mbop, but this was all right. Libby shows up and sees that 10,000 Maniacs is at Sabrina's party, and not Hanson, and she's totally jealous. Suck it, Libby! This was a fun episode to rewatch. It reminded me a lot of the 1995 Casper movie, the whole having a party at the house, 
and trying to keep a supernatural secret hidden. I'm gonna give it a four and a half out of five mmm bops. TGIF will be right back, and so will I. Don't go anywhere! Next up is my favorite TGIF show, Boy Meets World at 8.30, with the episode The Witches of Pembroke. Boy Meets World is one of those rare shows that I feel got better when it aged. Even though I liked the entire series, I preferred the college years, so it was great to revisit an episode at that point in time. So let's get into it. When this boy meets world. The episode begins with Eric and Jack heading to the club to pick up some women. However, they're stopped in the hallway by their neighbor Millie. Hey, it's TGIF alumni Candace Cameron, DJ Tanner from Full House. So DJ, I mean Millie, is really into Jack and invites herself into his apartment. Eric arrives home early because the club is closed down. Goodbye, pets! <laughs> he finds Jack and Millie making out on the balcony. This is when Millie threatens Eric. Don't get in my way. Sabrina the teenage witch? More like Millie the college age bitch, am I right? Ooh, you suck. Thanks, Dad. Eric tells Jack he thinks Millie's a bit of a freak, but that's okay because old Jackie boy likes him a little bit of a freak. Millie shows up the next day and says this. But Jack, I plan the rest of your life. <laughs> I mean, day. <laughs> Later that night, Eric sits down to watch a scary movie. Bye. Ah! That's right, Jack gave his girlfriend of less than 48 hours a key to his apartment. At this point, he deserves whatever fatal attraction shit that's coming to him. Eric finds Millie doing some weird ritual stuff on the if balcony and she straight up tells him she's a witch. How much did you hear? I heard you talking to Satan. <laughs> Millie plays it off in front of Jack by saying Eric tried to kiss her, and Jack believes her because he's thinking with the wrong head. Sean tells Jack that Millie's a witch too. I'm saying she's a witch. At least that's what I heard. But he seems pretty cool with the whole situation. So Jack asks, sorry, I mean Jack asks Millie if she's a witch. And she's all like, hell yeah, I'm a witch. You got a problem with that bitch boy? I may have paraphrased that part a little bit. Eric goes to Mr. Feeney's house and asks to crash there for the night, and Feeney says no. Then Mr. Feeney drops some classic Feeney advice, and Eric's like, yeah, I know what I have to do. Now there's a Halloween party at Jack and Eric's apartment that Millie forced them to have. This seems like a reoccurring thing tonight. Forced Halloween parties. Then the party turns into a weird witch chanting thing. And again, Sean seems pretty cool with the whole situation. Millie says it's time and ties Jack and Sean up. Kinky. This is probably how Jack hoped the night would end, just under very different circumstances. Millie explains that they needed the apartment, because once every thousand years, the moon... I honestly don't know, it was a lot of dialogue. I'll let her sum it up. In a thousand years, Valaris will come into alignment, and Satan's tail will appear, sending a light beam through the crystal of death, ensuring our immortality and obliterating you. But wait, Eric's here to save the day. The light beam hits Eric and it doesn't affect him at all. Jack and Eric rekindle their friendship and leave Sean tied up. No need to call the cops, I suppose. Gotta love Halloween. It really brings people together. Then at the end we get a cameo from Sabrina. What is this? A crossover episode? Sabrina's hanging out with Eric on the balcony and says, Why are you so nervous? I'm sorry, Sabrina. <laughs> My buddy just came off kind of a spooky relationship. He was he was dating a, uh... Oh, well, I'll, I'll just say it. He was dating a witch. What's so spooky about that? <laughs> oh, and Sean is a frog now for some reason. I did enjoy this episode, however, it wasn't that great. I didn't even talk about the B-plot of Cory and Topanga flying on a tiny plane, because it seems shoehorned in to fill time. Nothing happens and it's pointless. Kind of like life. Also, Sean seems very out of character throughout the episode and hams it up quite a bit. So, in honor of DJ Tanner and Full House, I give this episode 2 out of 3 Olsen siblings. Up next at 9pm and 9.30pm were the shows You Wish and Teen Angel. These shows both only lasted one season. I was going to talk about these shows both individually, but they're just small blips on the history of TGIF. The 9 o'clock and 9.30 p.m. slots on TGF for a while were where ABC tested new shows. It was a constant change of rotation. Some worked and some didn't, and these two did not. You Wish and Teen Angel felt like ABC saw the first year success of Sabrina the Teenage Wish and just said, do it again, but twice. You Wish was an I Dream of Genie inspired sitcom and Teen Angel is... Well, the title says it all. 
Instead of a teenage witch doing magic and trying to fit in, you had a teen angel doing magic while trying to fit in. Teen angel to Sabrina the teenage witch feels like that younger sibling your parents force you to take to the mall with you on a Friday night. I guess that would make you wish the weird uncle who isn't invited to family events anymore after that incident. One thing I found fascinating about these two shows though, is that Jerry Van Dyke played the grandfather on both shows. Two separate characters on two shows that aired back to back. Maybe one day as this channel grows I'll cover these forgotten shows, but guess what? This episode will not be that day. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed over the past month and continue to subscribe. Happy Halloween everyone!